um, when it comes to strategy and how we want to uh, develop or to see, we have we have no desire to change the 1.0 uh, track at all of how it's going, and that's why we actually delayed the publication a little while just to make sure that it wasn't seen as a uh, competitive thing. We just allow allow people to do what they're doing on the web to one note and make their, their efforts. And what we'll be doing is we'll be producing a shim that uh, sits on top of the current for the web browser implementation. We'll produce a shim that sits on top top of the current implementations and exposes the ORTC API as much as we can facilitate within the browser context. We'll also be doing as we talked about the different repos and Node.js. Uh, and a mobile uh, library that will become available. And we'll, we're going to sit on top of the ORTC uh, layer. We're going to uh, implement an SDP shim on top of the ORTC shim on top of the SDP shim. <laughs> now, it sounds a little strange, but the reason is, is A, we want to prove that you can do it. B, we want, we want people to have stable SDP. So the SDP that you get from your browser, you can't really predict exactly what you're going to get. When it comes to a JavaScript library that you include on your web page, you can be absolutely 100% sure of the script output it's going to produce because it's your script, effectively, that you're including. Um, and so you can choose your write your web app directly against, if you want to use the SDP shim, you can absolutely use it. You can talk directly, bypass it, use the ORTC shim, and then target these different platforms along the way. Um, and in the future, uh, we hope that ORTC will just be used directly, and uh, it'll just become available. But who knows what the future will bring? There's a there's a lot of dynamicism in this process, so we will see how it goes. Uh, we got some questions along. Is ORTC just a, a rewrite of CORTC Web? The answer is no. They are different. They operate at different levels. CORTC Web is is much more low level. Allows a lot of control over detailed aspects of how the protocol works. This doesn't, and there's a lot of security reasons for that. We, don't, we didn't want to expose too much control at that level. Um, and the bottom line is, is that we wanted to be able to produce a shim. And if you didn't have that low-level control, then you couldn't produce a shim. And it was really important for us to have a migration strategy so that people could use the API as it is on top of the browser implementations without having to wait for the browser to, to implement it directly. Uh, will ORTC be implemented by the browser vendors? That's anybody's guess at this point, but we're not waiting for them to do it. That's why we're, do, we're doing the shim. It would be better in our mind if they implemented it directly, just because there would be much more native integration and there'd be less likely to have compatibility issues. So, but we're not relying upon it. Uh, Microsoft Open Technologies has produced a browser plugin for an Internet Explorer. Uh, and uh, they're going to be demonstrating that implementation today. Um, and we are, we have various GitHub repos of um, source code that's going to be ongoing for various implementations when it comes to mobility or, or Node.js or whatever have you. We're taking a very proactive approach and actually implementing all of the stuff on the different platforms. So next. So this is the where we're hosting the, the main specification repository, the ORTC repo. So this is where, if you want to contribute uh, stuff to the specification, you can do pull requests to the, to, the, to the repo, and you can submit your comments or feedback into the community uh, group's uh, public work uh, uh, mailing list. Uh, this is a repo we just uh, turned on public. It's just in the beginning phases, which has to do with a mobility API for ORTC. And the, and the idea here is that you will have, it's going to be a native C++ implementation with wrappers in iOS and for Android, a Java wrapper. And there will be a um, uh, JavaScript version that will wrap it as well. So if you're implementing uh, web RTC applications on mobility, you can take this, uh, this repo and use it. And that's maintained by Hook Flash, and I don't think there's anything else to comment on that one. And this is a separate implementation because we don't we don't believe that the implementation 
that is going to be made available for mobility would be necessarily best suited for a server environment. So we want to have a different implementation when it comes to server. It'll perhaps be mostly written in JavaScript and uh, with some native implementation for the core pieces that core pieces that need some optimization. Um, we really want to invite, especially anybody who has a Node.js experience or wants to contribute to this aspect, be really helpful for you to join the community group and also join into this, this uh, uh, repo and help us to produce this server technology. Uh, will contributing to ORTC break compatibility with the browser? Uh, the answer we want to say is no, and it's one of our tenets to not break compatibility. Um, currently, the browsers aren't 100% compatible between each other right now. I'm sure that will change, but we want to make sure that we maintain as much compatibility as they have with each other. And that's going to be one of the tenets as we build all these different libraries. So if you add a codec or you do something like that, it shouldn't break anything that's there, and we, we don't recommend removing codecs that are you know, kind of standard to the browser, that kind of stuff. So it's really important that we have a foundation that works across all the different environments. Next. So what is the motivation for doing this? Well, this is a traditional browser rendering engine, and um, your resource is your HTML page or your you know, your CSS page or whatever you have you, and you have JavaScript that can fetch it, or your browser can fetch it directly, you can manipulate it, and uh, it's a basically a description language that you manipulate in order to cause rendering on, into the browser engine. And that's how a traditional browser engine works, but we can compare this in a moment. This is how we're currently asking people to program um, ORT, uh, no, no, sorry, the current web, web 1.0 API. We're basically saying, browser, give me an SDK blob. And so it creates the resource for you. It's not a resource that you pull from the web. It's not your resource. It's some undetermined blob of information. You don't know what it's going to be. Then you're asked to potentially manipulate it, whether they expose API directly or not. You're still asked to manipulate a blob that you didn't create based on criteria that you passed in. And then you have to modify this. And then you send it back into the browser to say, OK, actually render it. And it's actually a little bit more, this is a simplified process because you actually got to negotiate between different, two different points, these renders. So not only is it not your resource, you have to take somebody else's resource and throw it into the browser with your own implementation as well. Now obviously you can control what's going on on a higher level, but you know, it's, the, the bottom line is it's really not your resource to play with, it's the browser's resource. So when you look at it as a rendering engine, I mean there's different ways to represent it, but this is how I would represent it. You have the JavaScript, which pulls the resource out of the capture and render engine instead of from the web or from yourself, from generating it. And you also have JavaScript potentially talking directly to the capture and render engine as well. So it bypasses around the format. And so you've got this weird hybrid thing where you're, sometimes you're talking to the format, sometimes you're talking to the, to the capture and render engine, and you're doing this kind of mixed thing. <clears throat> And, and for us, that really doesn't make a lot of sense when you compare it to what it could be. So, if we we're going to clean this up, we'd like just to have JavaScript be able to talk directly to the capture and rendering engine and be able to control it using a simple API context instead of having to do all this weird SDP manipulation, which was originally generated from the browser engine. And this is what we'd like to see as the simple. You know, or a TC scenario, which isn't a lot different from what you see in the peer connection scenario in the current 1.0 API, which you have your application sitting on top of your RTC connection object, and your RTC connection object actually controls the RTP data, ICE, and TLS that's going from the wire, while your application controls it. And you mostly interact with this one simple object when you're trying to manipulate everything that's going on. 